Hey guys, Prentice Alex here. And today I'm doing a video that I feel is a long time coming. I've been wanting for a while to really dig into some history behind some blades, and uh, today's that day. So let's get started. First off, this blade I'm holding is my new personal carry piece. This is my representative kind of signature carry to show people what I do as a smith. It is a 5160 spring steel uh, blade, root de forge style finish. The blade is forged in a uh, slightly anachronistic fantasy inspired long sax profile with a Messer style guard, uh, a hybrid synthetic uh, synthetic organic uh, slabbed hilt with a brass pommel. Uh, blade have been working on this blade for a while. I'm really happy to have it pretty much done. I'm still gonna futz around a bit with some of the finish on it and all that, but that's, uh, that's something for another day. Now I'm working on this video. Anyway, the goal when I set out to do this was a fantasy-inspired take on the sax of Bagenoff, also known as the Tem sax, quite possibly the most famous long sax. I believe it's currently in the, uh, in the, uh, one of the British, uh, museums, either the Wallace Collection, British Royal Museum, something of that nature. That's not the part that I want to dwell on. First, a little background on saxes. Sax, literally translating to knife, it were tools and sometimes weapons that were carried all across, well, most of Europe, a uh, little bit of northwestern Asia, Slavic areas, um, heavily associated with Norse, Vikings, Anglo-Saxons. In fact, I mentioned it in my little commercial that I did not long ago that Anglo-Saxon literally translates to people of the night. And the sax was the knife in question. These were carried by pretty much everyone. Uh, they have a huge range of sizes, a bunch of different uh, typologies and profiles. And the uh, long and broad saxes were really, um, were really the, the weapon variants of these knives. Uh, the sax of Baganoff is roughly uh, 28 and a half inches all the way across. Mine here is 29 inches. It's bigger, that's how you know it's better. Um, and it has some really fascinating features to it. Uh, it was exhumed from the River Thames, hence the Thames sax, in the 1800s. Uh, it's believed to be dated to the 10th century. And it is one of the great mysteries surrounding it is the runic inscription. The runic inscription on it, backing off, we don't know the meaning of the word. The prevailing theories are that it is the name of the smith, but there's also some weirdness with the order in which the runes are inscribed that doesn't match up with the traditional grammar. So there's also a theory that it might be a cipher, or perhaps it was inscribed by somebody that didn't actually really know the runic. There's also, um, so there's some mystery there. There's also an unusual blend of inlay material on the blade, a mix of brass, copper, etc., etc., um, some bronze. You know, it's it's a fascinating, fascinating piece, and I think it's really, really cool that you know we have this piece that we've had since the 1800s. We still don't know everything about it. So, I think one of the things that inspires me about it is that mystery, and wanted to have something similar. Um, runic inscriptions during the Viking. Viking Age could be very important. There's talk in the sagas of the hero Sigurd, um, which if you don't know the tale of Sigurd and Brunhilde, it's one of the classic tragedies um, within the sagas. And it's a really, uh, there is a, a passage in there which recounts uh, Sigurd inscribing runes on his blade for protection. Now, based on other runic findings we have, not all runes, as once believed, and inscriptions were prayers or mysticism or occultism. Uh, they were the written language of these peoples. And 
that is shown by like we have a runic stone a rune stone inscription that literally says half dam was here that's a it's a really fun little piece because it's down in the middle east so that was one of the the first big evidences of just how far the uh for lack of better terms vikings traveled and i think that it's a it's a really fascinating thing to look at with that however just like modern day practitioners of wicca witchcraft and various other forms of paganism occultism spiritualities will write incantations and prayers so too did the the norse the the vikings use the runes as um, as inscriptions of uh, for uh, incantation and believing that they could grant power so you know words always have power in any kind of mythology so i think that's very fascinating and especially when we don't really know the truth behind this inscription now on to the runic inscription that i placed here now this runic inscription is uh, my Skadian name, my SCA name, Thorfinn, which you might notice the character in my commercial, which I hope to do more videos with Thorfinn. On the other side is the, nick is the kanji for the nickname my knight, as I am a man-at-arms, the nickname that my knight gave me of Keiji, which uh, means fire, conflagra uh, conflagration, it can also be a term for like wildfire. It's a cool nickname. I thought it was fitting. Um, but uh, I chose these inscriptions because they're personally important things to me and also relevant to where I'm going to be showing off this blade a lot. It's a really, uh, it was a really fun build and I hope you enjoyed digging into a little bit of the history here. Now here's what I'm sure you're all waiting for, some video of me cutting the crap out of some bottles and boxes with my new sacks. Hi everybody, Apprentice Alex here, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in learning more about the details involved in the craft of bladesmithing, please check out our main channel at youtube.com slash oldworldironworks. My teacher Bear already has a couple of great tutorial videos up there, which are a little older, but more is on the way. If you're interested in supporting the shop, then of course, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, share the videos around. Um, you can find us on our web store at oldworldironworks.net, or you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash oldworldironworks. Um, again, means the world to us. Thank you so much. Links in the description below.